Good morning and welcome back to another custom LEGO Legend of Zelda set where today, with only two weeks to go until the release of Tears of the Kingdom, I thought it's a good time that we take a look at one of the two customs I've made based off the trailer material in the lead up to this set. Now of course this will be spoiler free, I myself have not looked at anything past the main three trailers, uh, so everything you see today should be within most people's spoiler tolerances. Without any further ado, let's take a look at Z067 with 816 pieces. This is the Talus Takedown, and it's based off the Talus encampment scene and car from uh, various trailer materials, specifically surrounding uh, the grounds of Hyrule. And here you can see that more clearly with a brand new box that we'll take a look at in just a second. As mentioned though, this is for ages 8 and up, with 816 PCs retailing for 69.99 Great British Pounds and containing four figures and one brick-built character. And it consists of a couple of different uh, elements. Most notably, of course, looking at the front of our box, you can see that it is using a brand new style with some of the various Tears of the Kingdom appendages, such as like the swirls and the little... Um, almost maze-like patterns. You've got the logo down on the left and like some of the Marvel boxes and some other themes, there's a big render of the official artwork for Skylink in the corner. This will be the same for the other set that I'm doing pre-launch. Uh, you can see all the various logos, of course, and of course the Talos with the Bokoblin encampment on top, uh, and you've got Skylink falling down, preparing to land on a fused together creation uh, of uh, a car which we saw in trailer 2 I believe it was. Now this encampment itself was seen all the way back in the 2021 trailer um, and I've actually been sat on this Talos design well for the entire duration since that trailer has been out so nearly two years basically and uh, beyond that I uh, just adjusted it with the car more recently and I've always planned this would be around near the launch of the game. And if you open up our box, of course, you will find eight numbered bags and two instruction manuals. Taking a look inside the first one, it's a smaller manual, splitting the build so that other people can join in. And this builds uh, the fused car uh, along with your Skylink figure. And then in the second booklet, the other seven bags build various stages of Talus. So bag two builds the legs, bag three starts the, to uh, the torso and gives us our new red bow Koblin, more on him later. Bag 4 builds up the rest of the size before bag 5 starts the platforming and another red bow coblin. Bag 6 does your arms, bag 7 finishes off the top giving us our blue general as I'm going to call him uh, and then our 8th one builds the tower and watch post on the top um, giving us some really much needed contrast and making it look absolutely fantastic. So as of course you can see there are two main components. Taking a look at the car, all the major details are here. You can see the headlamps which are actually using one of the new pieces introduced with dots a couple of years back and these are slid into uh, the wooden beams using uh, sand green bars to represent sort of what looks like slush that's holding everything together. Ideally these would be in teal. Uh, and you can actually see the front wheels uh, don't exist on this car, and that is because in what looks like the images, uh, the wheels are under these dragon-shaped hoods. So uh, we use these brand new sangreen pieces that actually did appear in a set that only came out um, a couple of weeks before this video, and then you've got some tiles towards the back. You can actually see though here, uh, there's a little bracket which is useful for you to stick these studs on the back of Link's legs into, and then you can pose him here, and of course then get him to use the handlebars. And around the back you can see that the back is open, you can see the back wheels which are actually the speed champs wheels with some sand green tiles in them, and then of course uh, what appears to be like a battery or some sort of cargo uh, shoved in the middle underneath. And here is our talus. Looking from top down you can see there's a variation of about four different platforms at all different heights for you to pose uh, Bo Koblins or to have little fights between Link and other things, and there's lots of studs for you to pose people around. Taking a look at the back, one of the platforms has a ladder that you can use to climb up, because how else are you going to get on the talus if you're a Bokoban? Of course, Link could climb up, and again, there's lots of studs over there uh, for you to pose him on. And as you come round to the top, you can see there's another platform here that's been guarded by uh, some tan walls, very similar to what we used to see around encampments in sets like uh, Bokoban Battle Pack from Wave 1 of the Custom Set Showcase. Around the front you can see there's a lower power, uh, little platform and you can see that these platforms are often edged with tooth elements to represent like the bone uh, parts that hang down from underneath and a mark on all the corners of either the old outposts in Breath of the Wild but also the new ones here. And you can see that there's uh, cloth elements as well hanging down um, making like the, pendi uh, the pendants that hang in the front of the creatures. 
Uh, and then on this watchtower, you can see that it's built out of some stacked bricks with some uh, cross beams made out of tiles to make it look like it's a bit more cobbled together, some more bones at the top, and of course a ladder on the side for accessibility. And on the top, of course, you can pose one of your Bokobans with a bow in order to shoot down at any intruders and just defend the structure. You can also see that one of the other big elements on the top is the Talus's gem. Unlike previous Talus's, of course, now with the encampment on it, this is much more protected and harder to reach. So it's wedged in at this nice little angle and it looks really, really great uh, in comparison to how it's supposed to look in game. From beneath, you can see a couple more details and some of my favorite parts of the set. The aforementioned pendants, as well as uh, using minifigure poser pieces to make it look like the struts that are supporting the uh, various platforms are built into the, ta uh, the talus itself using candlestick elements. And I really, really love how that looks and it really does make it seem like the platforms are actually part of this talus. Here's a shot of those walls up close, and they of course can be used to be hide behind uh, and protect the crystal up top, but it's also accurate to the one talus we've seen so far, and I really wanted to include them as they add just another bit of colour. Taking a look at the arms, you can see they're rounded and built out. In fact, one of them is built very similarly to the body of Shuff the Mix, or from Series 1, there's a little bit of trivia for you there. And of course, they have some articulation to move around, so it can like bash its arms in the air, like when it gets mad in Age of Calamity. Or in fact, you can detach the arms and have them be thrown at Link. Who knows if this will be a feature of the Taluses in Tears of the Kingdom. However, it's still an option for your Talus here. And on the feet, of course, just to add some more traction, there are some rubber wheels, uh, meaning that he won't slip over and slide around as easily. He, of course, is the second mini boss uh, from the Breath of the Wild era to be recreated in uh, Lego form. And while this Hinox is a Breath of the Wild and not a Tears of the Kingdom Hinox, more on that later, uh, here are they together. I, I do actually have a version of this Talus without all the stuff on, but I'm going to save that because he will be appearing in a future set. Moving into our figures, of course our main character is Link in his Sky outfit. You can see this is a brand new design of him with a brand new hair mould which is based off one of the existing mullets, obviously with some ears built in uh, to create the longer hair and with his locks coming down the front. He's got a frown expression which of course we've seen before and of course his bandages around his arm where the new mysterious arm thing's going on as a dual moulded piece with some printing. The other arm is also dual moulded to represent the green sleeve of the tunic and then some printing goes down his torso to represent the sash and you can actually see I'm going to call it an infection spreading onto his chest as well. The legs themselves are just printed and this figure really suffers from the lack of two different torso colours being available for figures as one side really needs the, the light nougat to work however this side with the green doesn't look too great although it's I'm growing it's growing on me the more I look at it. Next up is the Red Book Coblin. This is the redesign I did earlier this year and if you've watched my video about the Tears of the Kingdom uh, enemies, you will uh, know about this guy. And of course he's based off the Red Bokoblin with their new horn variant, and that horn is a part of the Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild horn pack, which is uh, my new way of designing uh, the horned elements. So the Bokoblin head is an element, and you get this little pack, like with the Marvel Superhero Accessories, or the Rupee pack, uh, where you can choose to insert one of these horns into the top of any of the characters with a mini peg attachment, and um, it sits in there, and that means that the same head mold can be used for both Breath of the Wild and then of course Tears of the kingdom and of course you'd get all of these in the set despite only needing uh, the two tan horns and then the one forked one for the blue bokoblin. Speaking of of course here is the blue bokoblin recolored into blue and with the same like forked attachment on the mold. Here you can see the only shot that keeps him relevant from the trailer and you can see is the two pronged nature that looks very similar to a lizard weapon. And then lastly, technically, the brick built character, the Talus Encampment, which you can see here next to the shot from the trailer. The one thing I wasn't able to replicate too well was the spikes coming down from underneath, but as it's such a small detail at such an awkward angle, I preferred to prioritize the bone appendages and, of course, uh, the little like struts that show it being built out of the Talus. I'm really excited to experience these in-game, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what... Uh, kind of challenge it entails or if there's any more to it beyond what we see here. We don't even know where the weak point is on this one, but um, that's besides the point. And that I just wanted to compare to a couple of other things. Firstly, of course, the existing Wave 4 box art, which actually uses the Lego version of Link on the front. For these movie tie-in ones, movie, video game tie-in ones, I wanted to use the renders, and I really, really like the render of Link that they've chosen. I also wanted to mix up the box art a little bit, so you can see you've got the car on the top, the logos have been shifted a little bit, and I wanted to try something a little bit unique and special to celebrate the release of what should be a great game. I also do think, though, that they blend really well, and they do fit in the existing style, so I really hope you like how this one's turned out. 
Also relevant here are some of the recent links that we've done. These ones in specifics are a lot more of like the the smaller outfits, I would say. Uh, obviously some of them are really iconic, but they tend to be ones where it's a little bit more skin based. So I wanted to compare them because obviously not all of them suffer from this image that this new sash one does, where uh, the skin shows through on the side where it very clearly should be dark green because all the other ones he's basically just shirtless. So um, I thought it was an interesting comparison to make across the different Breath of the Wild links here. And speaking of links, here are all of them all together. You can see we've built up quite a variety now, adding some new ones and actually revealing one for the next set, which will be on release day. Uh, I know a lot of you won't be around as you'll be sheltering from spoilers, but um, I promise you it will be based off the first trailer from 2019. So I hope you're excited to see what that entails in a playset form. I'm super excited to show it off. And uh, next week we're doing something different related to the game as well. And that is actually going to do it for today's video based off the set Talus Takedown. I've been really, really excited to show this one because I absolutely love the build, I love the box art, and I love the figures. Everything surrounding this game is getting me more and more excited, and every aspect of this set is something that I would really love to see. In fact, it may be one of the ones that makes it into the I'm going to try this in real life list as well. It doesn't look too difficult to attain, and there's only a couple of parts which aren't available, and I'm sure I could find a way around that. In the meantime, let me know what you thought. It's been a long time coming, but I'm really glad it's finally here. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.